Hello friends, thank you for clicking on the video. In this one I'm going to show you how to set up my favorite tarp shelter, the plow point. All you're going to need is three stakes, a toggle, about four to six feet of bank line depending on the diameter of the tree, and a tarp of your choice. So let's go ahead and get started. Now for those of you who don't know how to tie a bowline knot, or a bowline knot, depending on how you want to pronounce it, I'm going to show you real quick. You're just going to come up about six inches on the line, put a bite in it, I'm going to pinch that off with my fingers like such. Then I'm going to take the tag end. I'm going to go up through the hole, back around the main line, back through the hole. And then I'm going to grab the tag end and the main line and just pull. And that's your bowling knot. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out how high you should set this up, it all depends on the weather. Today, it's warm outside. So I'm going to set it up a little higher so I can allow that breeze to flow through. If it was colder, I'd bring it down as low as I can get it. That way it can trap all the heat from the fire, make a microclimate, keep me warm throughout the night. Now another good thing about this shelter is you can easily adjust it. So today it's 65. Tonight it's supposed to be a low of 35. Now I'm not staying out here tonight, but if I was and it decided to drop down to 35 and I needed to get that uh, tarp down lower, I could easily just undo it real quick and readjust it. But from here, I'm just going to go around the tree. We're going to feed that line through the bowline knot. And we're going to cinch that down. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do a marlin spike hitch. All you're going to do is create a bite in the line. You're going to fold that bite over on top of the main line and just pull this through. And what you would do, it's the same way you would hang a backpack. Just put your stick in there, pull it down. But what I'm going to do is something just a little bit different. Since this is a bigger toggle and the loops on this tarp are not very big, I'm going to go ahead and feed the main line from that Marlin spike hitch in the loop of my tarp, pull it through, and then tighten it all down. Just like that. Okay, now from here we're just going to grab the opposite corner here. We want to make this as tight as possible. Now you can bring steaks from home or you can carve your own. I normally just carve my own, but for the sake of this video, I decided to bring some. We want to get this as tight as possible, so you may need to adjust this a few times. From over here, we're going to grab this corner. Take that down. Okay, now we're going to go to this side. Get that as tight as possible. All right, now one last thing I'm going to do is grab my paracord here. And I always try to get a tarp that has a center tie out point here. And what I'm going to do is just tie a line here in the middle of the center point. Just like up there, it's a bowling knot. Bring the line all the way through. As you can see, tying a line to that center point and then attaching it to a tree and really tighten it up gives you more room on the inside. I got plenty of room in there for my bedroll, for all my gear. I can keep it all out of the rain. Now there is something to keep in mind here. There will be gaps along the bottom here. Just take some leaves, pile it up, fill in these gaps on the outside. Another thing to keep in mind is if it was winter time right now, I would get this down probably a little bit lower to really trap that heat. And I would try to set this up, since the way to look at it is there's two openings here. I would set one side towards a natural wind blocker, which would be this hill behind me here. That will stop the wind on this side. And then I can set up a wind blocker here, which probably you guys all know it as a fire reflector. That's not really what it does. I mean, it may reflect a little bit of heat, but its main purpose is to be a wind blocker. It stops the wind from coming in and just sucking all the heat out of your body. So. I'd set my fire one good step away from the entrance, backstop behind it, 
Got the natural wind blocker on this side. Yeah, I can't wait to get out here in the winter time. Now the main reason why this is my favorite tarp configuration is because I believe it's the most versatile. It's great in any weather condition. If you wanted to in the summertime raise it up, let a lot of air flow through here, you can do that. And also, you can also put it anywhere you want. You don't even need a tree. You can just create a bipod and you can set this tarp up anywhere. As a matter of fact, a good buddy of mine, Corporal's Corner, has a video on a freestanding plow point, and I'll try to leave a link down below so you can watch it. And plus, in my opinion, it just kind of looks cool. I'm really into frontier type camps, and to me, this just seems like something that uh, frontiers would set up a lot. So, you can take all these leaves, rake them in there, lay on top of the leaves. You can put your nice uh, sleeping pad in here. So many things you can do with this shelter. Plus, if the weather gets bad, you can really scoot yourself in here and enjoy the show. It's a great view. Now, real quick before I go, if you guys have Instagram, feel free to tag me in your posts of you building these shelters. I've had subscribers in the past that have tagged me and said, hey, what do you think of this? I've seen this in your video. This is my interpretation of it. And uh, I'm always happy to interact with you guys. So if you have Instagram, I'll leave a link down below. Follow me on there. Set this up yourself, put your own flare on it, whatever, and uh, tag me in it. I'd love to see it. But until next time, guys, thank you for your support, and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care.